Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhay. Welcome to another edition of Pinoy Power Hawaii here on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Emmy Ortega Anderson, and it is always a pleasure to come into your home. We, um, we shoot live every Tuesday at 12 noon. Uh, today we have a very, very special uh, treat for you, and uh, you're gonna witness uh, uh, part of uh, Hawaii's history. Uh, it's titled uh, Shipment Day, and there's no better uh, people to tell you than the, the wonderful uh, people that are involved in this wonderful uh, production, wonderful masterpiece. So, welcome to Pinoy Power Hawaii, our uh, writer, director, Lorenzo Di Stefano. Thank you. And also our lovely actress who plays Olivia Kuule Shafi. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you for having us. Uh, take us uh, to uh, how did this production get started and uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Lorenzo and uh, Kuule. Okay. Well, Olivia Robello Bretha was my cousin. Mm -hmm. uh, she was born on Kauai in 19, uh, 1916. Uh, I didn't meet her until I was in my late 30s. I'm born and raised in Honolulu. Uh, she was my mother's first cousin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found out then that I had a, a cousin with leprosy, Hansen's disease, mm -hmm. living in Kalapapa. And I think like a lot of families, you know, there was like a secret relative, you know, not spoken of. And, and uh, when I did eventually meet her, I kind of fell in love with her, you know. She's, mm -hmm. Uh, quite a bit older than me, but a tough Portuguese lady, lots of character, lots of uh, determination, resilience. And uh, so I was fortunate to know her for 17 years, between 89 and, and when she died in 2006, at the age of 90. Mm -hmm. So she lived in Kalapapa for almost 70 years. Um, Shipment Day is a tribute to her. It uh, only covers the early days of her diagnosis at the age of 18 in Kalihi in the 1930s Honolulu and um, until the day before her shipment day which was uh, June 30th 1937 uh, after being uh, incarcerated in Kalihi Hospital for two and a half years she was sent to Kalapapa to a very unknown future. Mm -hmm. uh, Lorenzo and Kule it sounds so morose you know because uh, the little knowledge that we know about leprosy or Hansen's disease um, I can only liken it to uh, ship, shipment day. Can, I can only relate it as a going to concentration uh, camp or the death camp. I mean, uh, that's how I perceive it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at the um, image one for reference and uh, uh, tell us about the, this day. Well, this is uh, one of my visits to Olivia in the 90s uh, in her home in, in Kalapapa. She was uh, a great... Uh, raconteur, uh, a, a tough woman. We got along great, though. You know, I think I was, like a lot of friends and relatives of hers, I was kind of her window to the world. You know? mm -hmm. She was able to travel by this time. The uh, separation laws had been repealed in 1969, which are the laws that kept people from being able to ride around in cars yes. and go in people's homes. A very tough uh, situation that added to the stigma already. Uh, so I was able, luckily I met her after that time, mm -hmm. and so I was able to participate in her world, and we traveled together. She went to Belgium to Father Damien's ceremony yes. there, and she went to New York and Alaska oh. and L.A. and so on. So she she became a traveler, which made up for some of the isolation of her past. Uh -huh. right? Oh, I, I don't know uh, what I would do, being secluded from uh, the outside world and... Uh, just uh, being like a prisoner in, in your own world. But in 1969, that all changed. Uh, yeah, she was a parolee, like all the prisoners. She was prisoner number 3306 mm -hmm. for her whole life from the Board of Health. Yes. The Board of Health ruled, you know. Uh, concentration camp, maybe a, a little harsh of an analogy in terms of extermination was not in order there, but certainly incarceration mm -hmm. and... Uh, you know, uh, separation. Uh, right. They were wards of the state. Their needs were taken care of, but they also lost a lot of freedom as a result of taking that. Uh, they were, had no choice, really. Yes. You know? And that must have been very devastating to uh, somebody like Olivia at 18 years old, her prime. 
Uh, so uh, th uh, thank you for uh, sharing this wonderful story so that we can be all empowered and relate to the struggles, the trials, triumph, and how she lived a wonderful life after all these uh, government uh, uh, kinks got out of, out of the way. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move to the beautiful actress sitting uh, next to you, Kule. <laughs> uh, let's uh, refer to image uh, number two for uh, the people that brings shipment day uh, to life. Uh, well, we go have ahead a cast and tell of, us about cast of eight yes. people playing about 20 parts. Uh, Kutle plays Olivia, um, mm -hmm. and I think uh, I mentioned to you that she, we shall speak about this, that she met Olivia when she was nine mm -hmm. years old here in Honolulu, and the irony of the fact that now, these many years later, she's portraying her on stage, which is fascinating, wow. you know. So describe to us, Kutle, what was that like, the day you met uh, Olivia? Um, it was pretty... Surreal, I would say. I was nine, so I didn't know what leprosy was mm -hmm. or why I was meeting this woman. Uh, but my mom really wanted to meet her, and she wanted me to meet her because mm -hmm. they were going to Kalau Papa, and you have to be 16 or older in order to go visit. To mingle. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so because I wasn't able to go on that trip, they brought me to Queen's Hospital, where she, where she was staying. Mm -hmm. And all I remember is standing at the foot of her, bre had a foot of her bed, and uh, seeing her toes curled in and her fingers curled in and, you know, as a child, that's pretty fascinating. Um, but outside of that, I just remember she was really sweet mm -hmm. and a little bit sassy, which I liked. <laughs> <laughs> and she loved children, so she was very kind to me. Were you at all uh, fearful? Uh, were you afraid that you might uh, catch something? No, no. But, you know, my mom always told me that I was sort of a... I never really saw those things. I mean, I noticed them, uh -huh. but as a kid, those things just never affected me. I, everyone was the same to me. Yes, that's one wonderful in this yeah. way. Um, you, you have a deeper appreciation of uh, yes. what the story of Olivia and Shipment Day. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, take, us, uh, take us back again. Now, why did you want to bring this to light? Well, you know, as a tribute to her, um, she wrote a book called My Life of Exile in Kalapapa. It's mm -hmm. published by Pacific Historic Parks here in Honolulu, uh, originally uh, Arizona Memorial Press. It was published in 1988, so mm -hmm. it's been in print for 30 years. And I'm her literary executor, you know. She named me as a sort of watch dog for her, her work. And, mm -hmm. uh, we just put out a new edition of the book, uh, and it's thousands, tens of thousands of people really have become aware of her story through this mm -hmm. book, which mm -hmm. is available through them. Um, we'll also be having copies for sale at the theater. So it's in a book form? Right it now. is a memoir, mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, uh, My Life of Exile. Right. And um, so in that, she tells the whole story, mm -hmm. uh, including what we cover in Shipment Day and then beyond, uh, because it's too big a story to tell really on stage, right. or maybe right. even on film, you know. That's mm -hmm. uh, 90 years of life. So I decided to, uh, when she died in 2006, um, I didn't write it right away, mm -hmm. you know, but I kind of wrote it for Kuule as a one-act play. It was mm -hmm. a short 20-minute piece we did in, at a uh, theater in L.A., mm -hmm. and then we did it at Play Builders here in Honolulu mm -hmm. in 2016 as a one-act again, and Kuule won Best Actress at that festival. And awesome. uh, Manoa mm -hmm. Valley Theater approached me to expand it into a full length. So now it's about 80 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we were able to flesh out some of the things that were just sort of mm -hmm. uh, talking to the audience now become scenes and adding. We had four actors in that. Now we have eight. So her mother, her father, her, her uh, fiancé, mm -hmm. some sailors, her two girlfriends from the hospital. This makes up a kind of microcosm of all the people involved in her early days, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And Honolulu in the 30s is kind of a character, too. We use a lot of music from Saul Ho'opi'i. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, sort of the, what she might have heard on the radio at that time. Right. And it, it brings it to life, you know. Oh, is this a good time to uh, get a sampling of um, Cool A's? Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll set this up. This yes. is like a little uh, a monologue mm -hmm. from several parts of the play that we put together for events like this, so that people get an idea of Olivia's voice, which uh, Kule is wonderfully uh, embodied now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is from Shipment Day. I 
used to dream. I used to think I was special. I'm Olivia Ribello. I was born 21 years ago on June 6, 1916 in Kalaheo, Koloa, Kauai in the territory of Hawaii. Like other Portuguese women, my mother, Mary Fernandez, tended to her family and took in dressmaking and needlework for extra money. The men, like my father, Manuel Robello, either worked for the Spreckles, Kilauea, or Kekaha sugar refineries, or at other jobs involving the sea and the land. When I was about seven, we left Kauai and came to Oahu. It's been fun growing up in Kalihi, right next to the busiest downtown in the North Pacific. The streets are filled with trolleys and buses and cars and more people than I'd seen in one place in my whole life. It's like something out of a Hollywood movie, full of sights and sounds and extras from all over the world. Our neighbors are Hawaiian, Chinese, Japanese, and Filipino. Different as we are, we all live together on this floating island. They're all poor, just like us. It isn't like anybody's starving or anything, but there are times when it gets pretty tough. Until two and a half years ago, during the first week of October, 1934, my life was ordinary and uneventful. That's when Mama and I took the bus downtown to see the family doctor. Why do I have to go? I asked her. She said it was only a routine visit, that we kids can't stay, help without the help of the doc stay healthy without the help of the doctors. But I am healthy. She said she knew but that everybody has to visit their doctor at least once a year, whether they like it or not. When Dr. Wason came in, he looked at a blemish midway at my right arm. As he was examining it, he asked how long I'd had it. I told him about two weeks. Mama said we'd been coating it with red dirt from our front yard to stop the itching. That's when he unwrapped a brand new razor blade and said, I'm just gonna take a little sample for the laboratory to check out. I asked him what for, and he said it was just a precaution, that there were some things floating around, but it was probably nothing to worry about. That's when he began taking scrapings from around that spot in my arm. He went deeper into the flesh than I ever thought he would. I tried really hard not to scream, and I didn't, but I almost passed out. The sawbones bandaged me up and told my mother that I'm in excellent health for an 18-year-old. Not to worry about a thing, probably just a mosquito bite gone bad. We returned home and reported to my father that all was well. That night, I had a scary dream. I was inside an old wooden building with an eight-foot fence all around it. The people inside had distorted faces and expressions of fear and loneliness I never can forget. A few were young, most were middle-aged and old. Some were clearly sick, with bumps and swelling and swollen ears. Except for that, they looked just like my neighbors in Kalihi. Just like me. My mother was in my dream, standing in an area where people from the outside world were visiting those trapped inside. When my mother woke me and I told her of my dream, she said not to think about it anymore. Why should you be going to a place like that, Olivia? The doctor hasn't even called us back. You're perfectly fine. Soon we forgot all about it and went on with our lives. About a week later, a man showed up at our house. Is this the home of Olivia Rabello? Who wants to know, my father asked. The man opened his briefcase and handed him a piece of paper. By the order of the Board of Health, I'm here to take her away. Take me where? To Kalihi Hospital. But why do I have to go there? because you have leprosy. All my hopes for a normal life ended that day. The whole world had suddenly changed. Even if I were to live another thousand years, nothing would ever be the same for me again. Thank you. Bravo, <laughs> wonderful. Wow, gives me chicken skin. Um, and uh, thank you, did a marvelous job, uh, Hule, and I would like to see the whole play. <laughs> Good. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break, uh, and uh, we will be right back with more on Shipment Day here on Pinoy Power Hawaii. Again, we wanna thank the wonderful staff of, Pin of Think Tank Hawaii for their generosity.
Aloha, I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pumai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Welcome back to Pinoy Power Hawaii, and uh, we are having a uh, uh, discussion or uh, this uh, story, a big part of Hawaii, Shipman Day. And uh, you've seen a sampling of uh, the wonderful part that Kuile uh, plays as Olivia. Uh, um, I can only imagine the uh, terror, the horror that uh, she was feeling that day she was handed that uh, diagnosis or the day she was being taken away because of uh, her, uh, uh, the disease. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit more about leprosy because, uh, you know, it's not often talked about anymore, mm -hmm. um, real quickly to better understand. Well, I think it's a much misunderstood disease. You know, I've, mm -hmm. uh, when you know someone who has a, a uh, condition um, or a disability or anything, you become sensitized to that. If you love them, then you want to know more about what they've been mm -hmm. through. And uh, Olivia fought her whole life against that stigma. You know, uh, she says, I'm not my disease. You know, call me by my name. Mm -hmm. My name is Olivia. And you see that now with gay rights and various other people fighting for their uh, honor, you know, for their self-determination. And uh, so she was an early fighter. Uh, I call her the Rosa Parks of leprosy in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a strong, just a regular everyday person who uh, refused to submit. You know, she had to submit, but she refused to give in, you know. Uh, leprosy is a bacteriological infection. Um, unlike what I thought, it is not a tropical disease. It happens in Norway, it happens mm -hmm. in Brazil, it happens in Hawaii, in China, in India. It's a biblical. Uh, re references are many. Uh, we have a quote in uh, Leviticus mm -hmm. from the Old Testament about leprosy. Um, so it's around, and people are still getting it. Um, Dr. Kalani Brady, who's kind of a medical advisor to us on the play and a friend of mine and a friend of Olivia's, mm -hmm. told me recently there were 800,000 new cases last year oh. in the world. Uh, there are medications available mm -hmm. now, so uh, disfigurement and things like that are avoidable now. In other words, but people are still mm -hmm, getting mm -hmm. leprosy. Uh, and uh, one of the larger facilities uh, in the States was in uh, Louisiana. It's called Carville. And a lot of patients from Kalapapa and all over the world mm -hmm. went there for surgeries and such. It's, no, it's now a National Hansen's Disease Museum oh. run by the uh, National Institute of Health. Uh, so it, it took place in the south, it took place in the tropics, it took place in mm -hmm. Scandinavia. It's a devilish disease that uh, robs people of their uh, circulation, basically. That's why mm -hmm. the extremities are often affected, you know. But there's a lot of misnomers, too, like noses don't fall off and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is myth, you know. Uh, so we're trying to get at the truth of it through a, a one woman's story, yes. a woman who was engaged to be married. Who, uh, so the play is not all depressing, and we have some humor in the play, and yes. and, <laughs> uh, and the bond between her and her her uh, fiance Les Teixeira, mm -hmm. which is uh, broken because she's ashamed and she, he cuts him off and he never sees her again. Mm. But Olivia eventually married. She married three times in Kalapapa, all to patients, and uh, she married uh, John Bretha, who was her third husband, and mm -hmm. she, she they were really in love and and. Uh, they had a chicken and egg farm in Kalapapa, they had a prosperous business. Mm -hmm. uh, her parents later went to Kalapapa and ran the bakery so they could be close to her. Oh. But they still couldn't go in her house. They would talk from uh, across the yard, you know. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. sadness there, but uh, mm -hmm. Olivia would probably say she was maybe more fortunate than others, uh, but she still, you know, suffered a lot. 
Uh, so I know Richard Marks and Gloria mm -hmm. uh, because we camped in Kalopapa um, during my first year of college. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty familiar with that uh, special place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I can relate and uh, just appreciate the beauty and uh, uh, serenity of uh, that place. Mm -hmm. uh, we just saw Gloria a mm -hmm. few weeks ago. We were in Kalapapa. I wow. wanted cool. She had not been. And I hadn't been in five years, so I wanted to take her there so she could, mm -hmm. as an actor as well as a Hawaiian person, to, to feel what it was like to be in this holy place. Mm -hmm. And so we got to meet Gloria and uh, uh, many of the other patients that were there. Wow. And uh, it was, we can talk to her about what that meant to her. I'm sure it was a unique experience. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about uh, your meeting, uh, Kule. Uh... Well, honestly, going to Kalau Papa was such a treat. I mean, as an actor, especially playing a character mm -hmm. who was real and who experienced mm -hmm. a lot of uh, devastating circumstances, um, to go and you know walk where she walked and mm -hmm. see where she lived and uh, did you feel her presence? Yeah, a you, lot of you can come back to. There's definitely a very strong presence there uh -huh. still of not just her, but so many of the other patients. Yes. Um, and then they also, the patients who are no longer there, they're still alive in, you know, the uh, museum curator and anyone else who works there. Mm -hmm. They talk very passionately about uh, the patients and what their wishes are and how they're all fighters and mm -hmm. activists in their own right. And then, and then meeting them was very special. Uh, they're ready to tell their story, and uh -huh. they all remember Olivia, which was very nice. She was the star of the town. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was. Uh, she, you know, I finally just started asking people. So, were you uh, a friend or a foe mm -hmm. to to Olivia? Because she was really feisty, and you, you knew if she didn't like uh -huh. you, and you knew if she liked you. Boy. But no one had anything negative to say. Everyone uh -huh. remembered the chicken farm and her parents being the there bakery. and running the bakery mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I think because most people, they were ripped from their homes and they never, a lot of them never saw any of their family mm -hmm. members again. So even mm -hmm. when reading her book, you can clearly see that she was so lucky yes. to have two parents who loved her so uh -huh. much that they would move there just to be near her, even if they couldn't hold her hand or, mm -hmm. you know, spend a lot of time with her. But she was, she never gave up her power. No. Uh, she was always in charge. No, yeah. So, um, Lorenzo, could anybody uh, go there and uh, visit, or is it something that has to be specially arranged? Well, it is a national park now, mm -hmm. but it's because there are residents there, and there's still, it's the, the state of Hawaii Department of Health is still in charge. Right. Um, <clears throat> I believe it's about 10 people living there full time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they often come to Honolulu for treatment, but they, they, they want to stay there. So I think the, the uh, uh, operational rule is uh -huh. that uh, as long as there's a patient alive, the mm -hmm. state will continue to fund the, the workers and the hospital and right. various other services involved. At, that, at some point, uh, it's getting closer and closer. You know, when I, when, when I was visiting Olivia, there were 100-something, then there were 60, mm -hmm. and then there were 35. So it is a matter of time, you know, before the last patient dies or chooses to live in Honolulu or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's some patients at Leahi Hospital, too, that are not able to travel anymore. And that's a facility there that's called Hale Mohalo, right. which is where they often stay. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, it's days are it's going to change, you know, but it's difficult to stay mm -hmm. overnight. But tourists are, can go uh, for a day trip, I think. Through the National okay. Park Service. Yeah. So good to know that uh, they are maintaining for the safety of the patients or the residents there, mm -hmm. and then they have the option to uh, stay there mm -hmm. or uh, to remove themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's go back to the play because we want to certainly let everyone know and promote it and encourage all to come. Um, mm -hmm. What else could you uh, tell us? How could we get tickets or? Uh, uh, what's the proper channel? Well, the, the channel? play opens at Manoa Valley Theater on East, Valley, East Manoa Road. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary of the theater, mm -hmm. and uh, we're proud to be part of this season. Um, this is the first original play they've done in mm -hmm. almost 30 years. Yes. And uh, so, uh, ManoaValleyTheater.com, theater, T H E A T R E, mm -hmm. dot com, and uh, the play opens. Uh, Thursday, November 8th. It mm -hmm. runs through uh, the 25th. Some performances are already sold out, but if they go to that or if they call 988-6131, mm -hmm. they can get information about tickets. 
Okay, the number again is 988-6131. Or go directly to Manoa Valley Theater. Theater. Com. Okay, let's uh, refer to the other remaining slides. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the... Uh, <laughs> uh, this well, she loved her margaritas. Oh, and, I would uh, too. Yeah, uh -huh. I think this is in L.A. Uh -huh. It's certainly not Kalapapa. They didn't make those there. So you're sharing the straw um, well, to let yeah. people know that it's okay? Well, it wasn't really for that reason. I mean, uh -huh. uh, you know, maybe we're too cheap Portuguese to buy more than one. <laughs> more than but one, you have a special bond. More than one margarita. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it looks kind of like that, but there was no fear uh, on my part, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, definitely not, you know. Okay. And I think we have a slide of the okay. other actors, too. Uh, yes that uh, are involved. This is Kule as Olivia, and in the background you have uh, William Ha'o, a very distinguished actor here in mm -hmm. Hawaii, playing Manuel Robello, and Karen Kalana. And I Kalana, know the mom. You know, <laughs> she's a little bit in the shadow there. Yes. But Karen Kalana playing uh, Mary Fernandez Robello. I love Karen. Olivia's mother. Yeah, she represents all the good things about the uh, her show, yeah. Yeah, which is part of our empowerment. A, they're both great assets to the production, and uh -huh. you know, there's, the acting pool in Hawaii is, is growing. A lot of it is musical theater and dance. Yes. In terms of dramas, you know, it's harder to find actors who are willing to be vulnerable and to expose yes. themselves in yes. a drama like this. Mm -hmm. So I feel lucky that we, we got a good cast Well, together. you got a, uh, the right actress here, and I'm sure uh, this opens up more uh, bigger roles for uh, Kule. I mean, she's not only uh, talented, uh, beautiful and charming as well. So. Uh, congratulations on that, and Thank we you. will encourage Thank our uh, listeners to uh, come out and support. Uh, so again, if you would like uh, uh, tickets to uh, the performance, you may call 988-6131, and also go to Manoa Valley uh, Box Office? Manoa Valley Theater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Manoa Valley Theater .com for uh, uh, tickets. I understand that uh, some of the performances are sold out, but it will go on till uh, November 25th. November 25th, mm -hmm. and then they'll announce later in the run if it extends. For we an hope extension. it'll extend till around December 9th at this uh -huh. point. That's not for sure yet, but we yes. hope it'll happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we hope for an extension. So uh, please support us in this cause. This is a big part of Hawaii's history. And I got uh, enriched, enlightened, educated, entertained, and uh, <laughs> empowered. And that's within our mission here on uh, Pinoy Power Hawaii. Uh, again, I want to say maraming salamat po. Um, Diyos te agina. Aloha, mabuhay to uh, Lorenzo and Kule. Uh, we say mabuhay, agbiag. More power to you. Thank you so Thank very you. much. Thank you. Mabuhay. Uh, until next time. Uh, thank you again. Much mahalo.